In this video, I want to talk about the natural logarithm, ln of x. And by definition, this function is the inverse function to e to the x. So what I've graphed here is e to the x, and because it's an inverse, we have this nice reflection over the line y equals x, and what we get is the natural logarithm over here. And the natural logarithm has a restriction on its domain. e to the x can only be a positive number. And what this results in is that the domain of its inverse can only be positive numbers. I can only compute the natural logarithm of x when x is going to be a positive number. Now, the question is, I've got this lovely function here, but what is its derivative? And we're going to do the same basic trick that we did when we looked at the derivative of arctangent. For these inverse functions, we're always going to be applying implicit differentiation. So, we have y equals the natural logarithm of x. And, and what this meant, because it was an inverse, what it meant was that x was equal to the exponential e to the power of y. And again, I'll point out that the x here is only allowed to be positive. Now, taking the derivative of both sides of the original form is unhelpful to us. It just says the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of the natural logarithm, but that's what we're trying to figure out. However, Taking the derivative with respect to x of this other form is going to be very helpful. So let's see how that works out. I'm going to take d dx of both sides, the derivative with respect to x of x, and the derivative with respect to x of e to the y, thinking of y implicitly as a function of x. Derivative with respect to x of x is just going to be 1, but for the other side, we're going to apply the chain rule. e to the y has an outside function, e to the whatever, and an inside function, the y. So derivative of e to the y is just e to the y, and then the derivative of the inside, dy dx. I can then rearrange. This is going to give me that dy dx is 1 over e to the y. And I can look all the way back at the beginning, e to the y, that was just equal to x. So this is just going to be the same thing as saying that the derivative of the natural logarithm is 1 divided out by x. Now, everything I've done here is, again, in the sense of my restricted domain, x being greater than 0. I don't have a division by 0 here, but it's sort of interesting because the function on the right, 1 over x, that has a domain of every single real number except 0. But the thing on the left, the natural logarithm, that's going to have a domain of only the positive numbers. So there's a little bit of an asymmetry here. And for our immediate purposes, it's not so important, but as we get a little bit later on in the course, we want to try to improve on this. And the one way that we can improve on this is by looking at not the natural logarithm, but the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. And indeed, whenever I have an absolute value, an absolute value is a piecewise defined function. It tells you one thing when x is greater than 0, another when x is less than 0. When x is greater than 0, absolute value doesn't do anything, it's just the natural logarithm of the max. When x is less than 0, then it takes a number like minus 1 to 2 plus 1. It, it takes whatever the number was and it sticks another minus sign in front of it. In other words, the natural logarithm of absolute value x is the natural logarithm of minus x in the scenarios where x is a negative number like minus 1. And then graphically, we have down here, this was the original natural log of x. And then the other side of it, when x is less than 0, this is just this mirror image over to the y-axis. So this is the graph of the natural logarithm of x, and its domain is every value except x equal to 0. All right, so there's my function. Let's try to take its derivative. Well, when x is greater than 0, I've already done that. This is the natural logarithm of x. But when x is less than 0, now what I'm trying to take is the derivative of the natural logarithm of minus x, and I can do that by the chain rule. That is to say, the original one was 1 over x, I knew that, but, but down here, it's the derivative of the outside which is the natural logarithm, so it goes 1 over whatever I have on the inside, 1 divided by minus x, times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside is minus 1 because the derivative of minus x is minus 1. So what we get is derivative of the outside is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside. That is, it's just another version of 1 over x. So I can say that the derivative of the natural logarithm of x is just going to be equal to 1 over x, and both the left and the right, the natural logarithm and 1 over x, their domain is everything except 0. And this is going to be particularly useful in the future when we get to antiderivatives of functions.